Hi friends, welcome back to sakalvidya.com and myself Shri Ramakrishna Sharma. In today's session, we are going to have a discussion on our chapter 8 that is oscillations from our junior intermediate physics. From this chapter 8, we are going to expect one long answer type question for 8 marks. So let us have a discussion on LAQs of this chapter 8 that is oscillations of our junior intermediate physics. So very important question from our chapter 8 oscillations that is define a simple harmonic motion and show that the motions of a point the projection of a particle performing a uniform circular motion on any diameter is simple harmonic motion. So what is simple harmonic motion? In order to understand the concept of simple harmonic motion, let us take a small example of pendulum. So here, suppose thing here we are having a pendulum which is connected to a string at the bottom we are having a bob of mass m. So I think this is a pendulum which is connected to a fixed point. So this is a fixed point. So I am going to create some certain dis disturbances on the pendulum. So I am going to slightly move the pendulum to the right hand side. See what happens from right hand side it comes to the fixed point which means that is a mean position. Again from the mean position it goes to left hand side. Again it comes to the mean position. Again it goes to the right hand side. So which shows that pendulum is going to oscillate. The oscillations made by pendulum is one of the best example for your simple harmonic motion. So what is simple harmonic motion? The periodic motion in which the to and fro motion of an particle is said to be simple harmonic motion. The best example for simple harmonic motion is guitar. The vibrations made by guitar by a musician while playing the music is also one of the best example for your simple harmonic motion. So what is simple harmonic motion? So the particles, sorry, the periodic motion in which a particle moves to and fro motion along a straight line about a fixed point is said to be simple harmonic motion. I have said previous, previously. When the acceleration is proportional to its displacement in the opposite direction. So which means A is directly proportional to displacement. But opposite means we have to take negative sign. Next, acceleration is always towards a fixed point. The best example that is simple pendulum. So as we know, A is directly proportional to Y where minus sign indicates that opposite direction. Here A that is acceleration, Y displacement both are in opposite direction. Next, acceleration is always towards a fixed point. So in order to remove the proportionality constant, we must add some constant term here. Which means A is equal to minus KY where A is of acceleration, acceleration of the particles, and Y is the displacement, K is a proportionality constant. And minus sign indicates here both acceleration and displacement that is y are in opposite to each other or opposite to each other or opposite to each other. So what is simple harmonic motion? The periodic motion in which particles move to and fro motion along a straight line about a fixed point is said to be a simple harmonic motion when the acceleration is proportional to its displacement in opposite direction. So here A is directly proportional to Y. Here A means acceleration which is directly proportional to displacement. Here minus sign indicates the both acceleration and displacement are in opposite to each other. Next acceleration is always towards a fixed point as I said in the case of simple pendulum. So the best examples for your Simple harmonic motion are the oscillations made by simple pendulum and the vibrations of the string of your guitar. Now let us derive a proof for the production of a uniform circular motion on any diameter is simple harmonic motion. For this let us consider a particle P which is moving in anti-clockwise direction in a circle. So let us consider a particle P as I told you in the previous case which is moving in uniform 
on the circle of radius a units with an angular speed of omega in anti clockwise direction so the particle is going to move in the anti clockwise direction if the particle p if the particle makes one revolution then the projection pn makes one oscillation on the diameter so this is a pn which is going to make one oscillation on the diameter so in this case o is the center of the circle and op is the length of the radius of the circle that is a units p is the particle which is lying on the circle which is going to take one revolution in anti clockwise direction so let us derive the proof for this so what do you observe from that circle if you zoom it it is a right angle triangle there so one right angle triangle lies in the circle so which means that right angle triangle is in, is in this form that is p o n here it is theta the value of hypotenuse is a and the value of o n is y right so the values of o n and op are given simply we can take it as sin theta is equal to opposite side by hypotenuse right so what is the side that is opposite to theta that is simply o n so what is the o n o n is divided by hypotenuse so what is hypotenuse here op op so what is the value of o n here y simply y so sin theta is equal to y by so what is the value of hypotenuse that is op simply a that is radius of the circle a so from this directly we can write y is equal to a sin theta a sin theta so what is the value of theta we don't know so we know that from our angular displacement from our angular displacement we know that theta is equal to omega into t so now we are going to substitute the value of theta in this first equation so we are going to get y is equal to a sin times of omega into t simply y is equal to a sin omega t so let us assume as equation 1 let us assume as equation 1 so from this triangle we are going to take this smaller section that is right angle triangle from this right angle triangle we are going to derive one basic equation based upon the sin theta we know that sin theta is equal to opposite side by hypotenuse where the value of opposite side is y and hypotenuse is a that is the radius of the circle so simply we are going to derive one basic equation from this sin theta if we cross multiply we are going to get y is equal to a sin theta so now we are going to find the value of theta from our angular displacement so what is the value of angular displacement theta is equal to omega into t so we are going to substitute the value of omega into t in the value of theta so we are going to derive one basic equation we are going to derive one basic equation that is y is equal to a sin omega t so here y is equal to displacement so far we have found the displacement so next we need to find velocity so what is velocity so what is velocity velocity is nothing but rate of change of displacement so if we differentiate the above equation 1 with respect to time we are going to get velocity so simply velocity is equal to d by dt times of y so that is nothing but v is equal to dv by dt so velocity velocity is nothing but the rate of change of displacement with respect to time so we need to apply the concept of differentiation on the both the sides for equation 1 applying concept of applying concept of differentiation for equation 1 so we are going to get d by dt times of y is equal to y is equal to d by dt times of a sin omega t 
So what is differentiation of sin x? With respect to x, we know that d by dx of sin x is equal to cos x. Right? Then what is differentiation of d by dx of a sin x or sin x? Simply a sin, sorry, a cos ax. So now we are going to apply this concept that is d by dx of sin ax. Simply you are going to get a cos ax. So let me write here. So dy by dt is equal to a cos omega t into omega. Simply a omega cos omega t. So what is dy by dt? The rate of change of displacement with respect to time is velocity. So velocity is equal to a omega cos omega t. Let us assume as equation 2. Let us assume as equation 2. So far we have found displacement that is equation 1 and velocity that is equation 2. Now we are going to find acceleration. So what is acceleration? So acceleration is nothing but rate of change of velocity, right? The rate of change of velocity with respect to time is nothing but acceleration. Simply a is equal to d by dt times of v is nothing but acceleration. So simply dv by dt is nothing but acceleration. So now again applying the concept of differentiation on the both sides for the equation 2 that is d by dt times of v is equal to d by dt times of a omega cos omega t. So what is the dif differentiation of d by dx of cos x? Simply minus sin x. Right? Then what is the differentiation of d by dx of cos ax? Simply minus a cos ax. Now we are going to use the concept of this one. In order to differentiate the above equation. So we are going to get dv by dt is equal to a omega minus sin omega t into omega. So omega into omega, omega square, a omega square minus sin omega t. So what is dv by dt? The rate of change of velocity is nothing but acceleration. So a is equal to minus a omega square sin omega t. Since it is in the form of a is equal to minus omega square a sin omega t. Since it is in the form of a sin omega t. From equation 1, a sin omega t is nothing but y. So now I am going to substitute the value of y from equation 1. Please don't get confused here. Here, acceleration, so far we have found that a is equal to minus omega square a sin omega t, right? What do you observe from this? a sin omega t, a sin omega t. So what is the value of a sin omega t? Simply y from equation 1. So from equation 1, the value of a sin omega t is nothing but y. So a is equal to minus omega square y. Let, let us apply the concept of proportionality constant that is k is equal to minus omega square which means a is, is equal to ky which means a is directly proportional to minus y which means acceleration is directly proportional to the displacement in the opposite sign which means opposite direction. So by this we have found that the projection of a uniform circular motion on any diameter is simple harmonic motion. So for this 
you have found displacement that is equation 1, velocity equation 2 and acceleration that is equation 3. Equation 3 is a very important question for your examination.